I'm Lisa Bontesumi, and this is the App Mindset podcast series on Sports Epreneur. This podcast series is a space for conversations with athletes, coaches, practitioners, and stakeholders in sports. And it's where those individuals share their perspectives, experiences, and thoughts on mental health in sports. Eric Kazimoff of Sports Epreneur is generously hosting the App Mindset podcast series on his platform as he deeply believes that these conversations are essential and deserve to be prioritized. This is the AF Mindset podcast series on Sports Epreneur. Sports Epreneur, the content platform where sports, entrepreneurship, and mental health collide. If you are looking to start a podcast or create original content, you have to talk with the team at Sports Epreneur. I work with them and I vouch for them. It's that simple. Go to sportse.io to learn more. Welcome everyone. Today we have Sydney Supple with us. She's a collegiate softball player. She's a rising senior at Northwestern University. She was born and raised in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And there she was a three-time Gatorade player of the year for Wisconsin, where she won the state championship with her team as a senior. She committed to Northwestern in eighth grade where she pitches, plays first baseman, and hits. This year, they won the Big Ten Conference and beat Arizona State University in the Super Regionals to make it to the Women's College World Series, where she started as a designated hitter. So awesome, so amazing. She also majors in journalism, and we have a lot to talk about today together. Welcome, Sydney. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk today. Yes, we're excited to have you. I'm excited to have you. It's been months in the making and we had to prioritize the fact that you were finishing up your postseason and that <laughs> that's super important. <laughs> what was it like to play in the Women's College World Series? Oh my goodness. It was hands down one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had in my life. To play in a venue that I've always dreamed of playing that I watch every single year religiously since I was a little girl and just been like, I want to play there someday. And I actually went to OKC when I was a sixth grader. And I remember telling my dad, like, I'm going to play here someday. And then just to feel it become a reality and to step on that field and see 15,000 people. It was just so surreal and such a joyous moment for my family and I, and just so exciting that the sport has this many fans and that we can bring a venue like this. It was just truly, truly so incredible to be a part of it and to be one of the eight teams standing on the field. I I mean, I'm kind of getting chills. You're talking about it and kind of getting emotional. I I can picture you as a little girl saying that and like, gosh, the, the power of those words, you know, and the power of the mind to be able to say that and then work hard to get there, not even knowing yet as a little girl what that meant. But, um, you know, every step you took after that, I think led you to, to those moments, that moment. And, I, and I'm, I'm super proud of you. Oh, thank you. And I mean, you understand you're a softball mom and it's been so cool these last month. I've been kind of watching my little nephew play baseball and walking by all the little softball fields I played on when it was probably an audience of, you know, 20, everyone having a mom or dad there. And and then to think about, you know, how that led me to this stage is just, it's been such a crazy ride. And I'm just so blessed to that. The sport has brought me so many incredible moments. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, let's speak about that. Like in some ways we have discussed too, like sport and softball as a vehicle for so many other things. I mean, in itself, it's an amazing opportunity to test your physical abilities, your skills, your mental fortitude to compete at the highest level here. Like what, what, what do you appreciate the most about what softball has brought to you? You know, I truly believe softball is a game that represents so much of life. And I have had to give my heart, soul, and body to softball for so many years. And it's brought me probably some of the highest moments of my life, but it's also made me face so much adversity. You know, I've had tough, heartbreaking moments with the game, but it's taught me how to get up 
how to believe in something bigger, how to lean on people around me and just let people love me and support me. And in return, be able to love my teammates and love my coaches and kind of get through whatever obstacle we might've been facing and to come out on the other side, no matter where we finish, like just, and having so much of those experiences, softball has prepared me for life. And it's truly just made me a fighter. And it's allowed me to put my heart out in life without being scared of being hurt because I know what it feels like to be knocked down, but I also know how to get back up. And that's like, think the biggest lesson it has taught me. I mean, those are a few lessons. I mean, it, <laughs> those are, and those are life lessons. And I think it's so important mm-hmm. to stress, right. That our sport can teach us so much about life, teach us so much about how to relate to others, how to lean into people, how to give support as well. Like describe the relationship with your teammates with this really important Northwestern team this year. Mm -hmm. I truly believe our chemistry was what led us to the Women's College World Series. And every single one of my teammates would agree with that. We just had such a focus on creating real, genuine, authentic relationships from the fall. And, you know, just really emphasize that and took time to go on one on one, you know, out out to lunch, go on a walk, go on coffee with somebody maybe you didn't really know well on the team. And we just got to know each other on such a personal level. So showing up every single day was fun because you love the people you were around. And that's so important in any sport in college athletics, because it's a grind some days, you know, you're getting up every single morning, you're staying late. And if you can enjoy the people you're doing it with, it doesn't feel like work anymore. You get excited to finish a long day of classes and to go be with your best friends. And I just feel like we created such a special environment where we truly wanted each other to succeed. And when, once we developed that selflessness and this genuine relationships, it sparked and raised our level of play so much. Wow. Wow. I, I can only imagine. I mean, what you're talking about is building, like you said, that team chemistry, the team cohesion, the bond, mm-hmm. um, where, yeah, you're playing for yourself, each other and your school and your parents, your family. Tell me, because I think this is a really, really important piece of it. Was that, were those like one-on-ones and coffees, were those, um, did those originate from the players themselves? Like, did that come as an idea or was this something that the coaches um, kind of brought into your um, kind of focus and wanted you guys to do? Yeah, I think a lot of it, the action was taken by the players. You know, I think we had a meeting at the beginning of the year where, you know, our coaches expressed like, you know, we have a great chance to do something, but the only way we're going to do it is by us all riding one bus together. Mm. And that message was so key to us. And from there we took action as players and, you know, it's not like they were scheduled you know, appointments that we had to attend, like it was reaching out on our own times because we wanted to, we knew it was important. And, you know, maybe we had to put ourselves out there the first few times, but after we did that, it just came so natural. And you just wanted to keep hanging out with these people that it was just, it happened in such a fluid way. Mm, mm. Yeah, you, you ladies are go-getters and like you said, fighters. Like, you know, <laughs> you, you, take, yes. you take heat of a message and you go for it. I love that. It's so important. And such, you know, a role modeling way of being. Like you're, you're more than an athlete out there. You're, you're someone's friend, you know, deep, mm-hmm. deep friend. Like you care. And I think, like you said, that takes the game to a whole nother level. Um, well, how do you see, I mean, you're a rising senior, you have one more year. Um, what do you see as the future of softball? Like, where is it going? I'm so excited for where their go- the game is going. I truly believe that every single year, the game is getting a little bit bigger, a little bit more popular. Our views are going up. And it's been amazing to see, and especially in these last few years, people invest more in softball and then the return it's getting Mm. and I just truly believe I mean for example they put up I think it was 
three to 5,000 more seatings in Oklahoma city and it's sold out crowds. Wow. You know, so then wow. it's, it's us saying, well, let's build an even bigger stadium. You know, it's, it's ESPN signing more games for us. And then the viewership's going up. Okay. Well now give us even more games. So I, I just truly feel so excited for the direction that the game is heading. And I feel so fortunate in the time that I've been able to play the game that it's been, you know, at the highest pinnacle. And I'm so excited for these girls who are going to be playing even past me because it's only going to get higher. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's such an exciting time to be a part of softball. Even if you're a fan, like it is growing and it's just becoming an even better experience for everyone viewing the game. Absolutely. And having more access for us to view the game as often as possible. Um, and, and in mainstream situations that we can view it on TV and like see it and see that it's prioritized. Um, it could be prioritized more and we'll get there, but like, it, mm -hmm. you know, it's way different when I was a kid for sure. Um, do you see that, um, well, how do you see um, athlete mental health in your sport? Like how important is that to you? How do you advocate for it? What are your thoughts there? Mental health is so critical in every sport, but I think extremely within softball because people say it all the time, it's a failing sport and you have to learn how succeeding three times out of 10 is a great average. It's a great year. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that that's the reality, mm -hmm. but it is. And in terms, you have to be so strong mentally, but I think within this last, honestly, since COVID, since I really got to college my freshman year, I have learned so much about what it means to be mentally strong, because I think I had this mindset that so many players carry that it's like you know you just have to let it go which you do you have to let it go and move on to the next pitch that, but that you had to kind of burn your feelings and become emotion emotionless when you're playing the game which again to some extent is true but I learned that just you know being vulnerable and talking to people if you're having a hard time with the game and seeking help we have amazing amazing uh, mental health resources at Northwestern and people we can talk to. And I think as a team, we speak, we speak so freely and open about it that it's just, it's allowed a lot of us to be able to build better relationships with a game that is so hard in that we are putting so much of ourselves in. And it's, you know, when you're putting your whole heart into something, you can get hurt and it's learning how to deal with it and how to especially remember you are so much more than this game. And I think that is something that I have embraced more so than ever this past year is that I am a softball player and I am so proud of that, but I am a person that has so much value when I step off the field as well. Absolutely. And I wish and hope, and I know one day every young lady will feel that way too and, and realize it and own it. Um, and know that when you quote unquote fail in the game in that moment for whatever reason or not quite hit it the way you want, literally or figuratively, that doesn't define you as a person. You are not a failure. It might be a failed attempt, but then we recover. Um, you know, and that's the mental fortitude of being able to you know, respond to adversity, which it sounds like you've, you've done <laughs> a lot of, and it's made you who you are, which is an impressive young lady. Um, I feel like, you know, just thinking about, like you said, I was a, I am a softball mom, like even inning to inning, game to game, your emotions can change. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not even like in, it's not simply in between games or in between tournaments or anything like that. It's, you know, you could have a good at bat, ride that for a little bit, and then it goes away. I mean, even the biggest top players have slumps, right? And it's, what's your response? What's, how do you get back and do the best that you can? Like this weekend, my daughter was like, she sprained her ankle. Well, not, well, mildly sprained it in practice. And so we were like, is she going to play? Is she not going to play? 
um, of course she's going to want to play. And so we taped her up, she played with the brace and then she's playing super tentatively. And we're like, okay, like I get it kind of like the diff, it was a lesson in her learning the difference between playing with discomfort um, and kind of pushing that a little bit and then playing with pain because she's never played with an injury in the lower extremity like that. So she, once she knew she's like, oh, she could actually test it a little bit. She played more freely and kind of was in her body a little bit more. And, um, you know, we took care of her in between games and things like that, but even just testing your own limits and um, like mentally and physically and what, what can my body do? What, what can I push it to do without like deliberately hurting it? And that goes mentally and physically. I mean, I know you suffered an injury as well this past season. Like what, 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 what did you learn about yourself in, in that recovery and that healing process? I learned a lot. I mean, I, I fractured my nose about two weeks right before season. And they told me it would be an eight week recovery. And I came back in about two and a half weeks, which (laughs) it was kind of crazy. And I honestly don't think that I quite realized that I still had healing to do probably even mentally until I was already playing season. And that was something I had to do a lot of self-discovery and that I had to ask for help and talk to people. And I think the best advice that I received was because my whole focus when I was injured was I just need to be back on the field contributing to my team. Mm-hmm. Like I, I need to be back. And I saw myself as the only way I could contribute was the physical side. You know, I, I needed to be back hitting. I needed to be back pitching. That's the only way I, I can help my team. And once I was back playing, I, I noticed that I had such a similar mindset where, you know, I look at the end of the game and be like, well, did I contribute today based off of my hits or my pitching? And I had an amazing advice um, from one of our uh, people we can talk to at Northwestern, who is a, a great um, mental health performance coach. And they helped me reframe what I felt contributing to the team was. And instead of judging off of my hits or my pitching innings, it was a list that I went through after every game of probably 10 different aspects of the game. Was I a great teammate that day? Did I hustle and play my absolute hardest? Did I come in super mentally and physically prepared? Was my body fully warmed up? And so on and so on. And I started looking at the game so much different that when I walked off the field and I was checking eight of those boxes, it didn't matter, you know, how many hits I was having. I was still feeling proud of what I delivered. And I feel like it just allowed me to play the game in such a more freeing and loose way. And it also allowed me to let my mind and my body have grace and still healing with my nose and having to sit out a few weeks that's amazing amazing information right there and such a value I mean your mental health performance coach is amazing um what they're pointing out and what helped you free yourself up a little bit is um control what you can control like like how many hits you get is not fully in your control um contact is but not hits Um, and then judging, like, if I get a hit or not, do I feel good about my day? Mm. You know, that's kind of left up to other entities. They're pointing out process goals too. Like these are things I'm fully in control of. And if I do it, it's all totally up to me. If I don't do it, it's totally up to me. And I can, I can check it off as I do it, which is also gives a lot of feedback to our brain that encourages us to keep going. So that's amazing advice, such a value. Um, and just changes the whole mindset that if I can do these things, like completely warm up my body, like you said, like commit to my pre game routine, these are the things I can do. It changes the whole thing. And you feel like more empowered, um, yes. which is amazing and take you far in the game and in life. But that that's, thank you for sharing that. That was great. Really, really great. I mean, it segues into the, the next question around, um, 
tips, possible tips to up and coming players. Um, that was a huge one. Um, I also know that, you know, you can contribute your leadership, which I know you have your ability to lead verbally and, and by action, um, is another way to contribute, um, and being able to be like, that's part of being a good teammate, like you said. So what, what tips do you have for like an aspiring softball player who wants to play in college? Like looking back at your collegiate career, you still have a year to go, but what you've learned so far, like what would be some tips or things that you'd want them to like pay attention to and um, just put some focus on? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, it would be if it's your dream, you have to believe in it. And if you believe in it, you can be it and you can compete at the highest level and you can play college softball and, you know, end up at OKC. And I just think that is the most important part is just believing in yourself and surrounding yourself with people who believe in the journey that you are on and not wasting any time to let anybody else's doubt creep into you. Like they don't belong in your circle. And if they are like, let it, use use it as fuel and just remember that you are the only person who needs to believe in it and I am so fortunate that I had such a strong support system within my parents and within my family and I understand that that's not necessarily the case for everybody and so if there's anybody listening and if you're wondering you know if you can do it like this is me telling you that you can and to let that motivate you to work as hard as you possibly can because if you do those two things you can do anything you want to do because so much of this game is played from heart and motivation I truly truly believe that and I, and I think the second piece of advice I would give is never shortchange the game hmm. like it doesn't matter what day it is it doesn't matter how you're feeling the game knows and if you give everything to the game no matter what the game's asking you for that day, if you don't feel hundred percent, if you're down, how many runs, like if you keep going out there and you're saying like, this is everything I have to the game that day, the game is going to reward you. You know, it might not be in the moment. It might not be in the day or that season, but it will. And I just, I believe that's so huge because not every day is going to be perfect with the uh -huh. game, but if, if you pay your dues, the game is going to reward you tenfold. Again, so important and can only come from someone who's lived it. Like not just what you're saying, <laughs> but how you're saying it, how you're saying it, the passion and your belief is so strong. Um, I don't know if others can pick up on it. I'm sure they can to some extent, but like it's super palpable right now for me. Um, I think what, Thank you. you're welcome. I mean, I think that um, you're speaking to a few different ideas which are are key is that belief you know that that and and enforcing the belief because if you believe in yourself alone the belief is going to wane is what you're talking about right you have to have people mm -hmm. in your corner on your side to keep uplifting that belief and enforcing it um you're also talking about the sort of society we live on live in it depends on the age range of folks but like that immediate gratification like waiting and being patient and knowing that the game will reward you it might not be on your own time and in your own desire but it will and to look for that you know what I mean like like know that you're investing in it and it will come it will come yes right so those are that's Again, some amazing, amazing advice that only again comes from experience. Um, what about, I'm gonna flip it a little bit. What, what tips, cause I know you've played softball for many, many, many years. You've had different kinds of coaches throughout your career from little girl to now. Like what, what were some favorite characteristics in a coach that mm -hmm. you really, really, light helped you be not just a better player but a better human not just the technical aspect of the game right that they can coach on but what personal characteristics did or personal commitments did they make um that that you really that it really spoke to you and it really helped you and your teammates 
That's a great question. And I'm so fortunate. I've had a handful of amazing coaches to really just choose from and reflect on. And I feel really fortunate that I attend a university that I just have so much respect and admire our head, honestly, our whole coaching staff. Um, but my head coach, Kate Johan, and then her twin sister, associate head coach, um, Carol Johan, and pitching coach, Michelle Gascoigne. Like, we have an incredible all female staff uh, besides our trainer. He's like the one male and he embraces <laughs> it. And I love it so much. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but I, I think it's just the way it's like, I watch Kate and I always say she, she carries herself more professionally and more polished than any other woman I've ever met. And she just lives it day in and day out. And it's so inspiring that the person who you're having lead you like as a team is also someone you like hope to emulate someday. Mm. And I think probably some of the char- characteristics that I like love about her the most is one is that she's just such a strong woman, but she teaches us, us lessons about how to be strong women and not just strong softball players. Mm-hmm. And just talking about how do we respond to adversity or how do we hold our head high and we walk into a room, you know, where you might feel a little intimidated. It's like that's lessons that I'm going to take into my job and I'm going to take into my life someday. And I just watch how she embodies it every day. And, and, and I think it's so cool. And I tell this to a lot of people, but she is a mom, um, her and my pitching coach, my pitching coach is a, a newly mom and they take their daughters to work and to practice every single day. And it's such a incredible environment. And it's so powerful to see that she's at the top of her game. She was big 10 coach of the year and she's being an incredible mom on the side of it she's over there teaching us but she's making sure you know her daughter gets her homework done or she has plenty of books to read while we're practicing and she's coaching a top tier team like they are showing that you can do it all and as as women like that's probably one of the most empowering lessons we can see as as young women that we can be at the top of our career and be at the top of our family and just really do it all and our pitching coach she was out this fall. She had her baby and she was back this season, you know, holding her in the stroller, you know, rocking her back and forth as she's coaching us. I mean, it's just truly incredible. I love it. I love it. I mean, what, what a scene to see and take in. I mean, Mm -hmm. and you know, the benefit that their kids are getting from being around you guys, like, yeah, you know, we love them. It's, it's, they're getting so much from you. And then you are giving so much of yourselves to them too. I mean, it's, there's, it's such a symbiotic experience. Um, the role modeling you get, but the love and care and admiration that you give to your coaches and their kids is so cool. Um, and again, as women to know that you can do all those things and probably again, not doing it alone. Cause we can't, we don't want to, we don't want to, exactly. it's, it's, <laughs> you're there. I mean, they're intentional. I'm bringing my kids here because these women that they're going to be around are going to, you know, impact their lives incredibly during this time. So yeah, you guys, it's, it's an amazing scene. No wonder, no wonder you guys went so far this year in, in so many ways. Um, Sydney, you're, senior year is coming what do you have planned for yourself off off the field and on you know it's funny how many times people are saying that and I still like cannot comprehend that that's reality (laughs) (laughs) I think you know I've asked myself this a lot like you know what do I want out of my senior year and I think it's just to really enjoy each and every moment And, you know, I do have fifth year eligibility potentially, and I'm, and I'm still, you know, taking it day by day and not really rushing that decision, but Mm -hmm. really just heading into this year, like enjoying every opportunity with this group of women, enjoying just the experience of being a student athlete at Northwestern, 
you know, in, enjoying the early morning lifts and, and the camaraderie that brings and like how great it feels after we finish like some of our running tests and, you know, then trying to rush a class in 10 minutes, like all that craziness that is just overwhelming your first how many years, but then you kind of look back and you know that someday you'll miss it. So I'm just kind of trying to enjoy it and embrace all the little moments that it brings. I love it. I love it. You Again, it's, it's, you know, you're not talking about stats. You're not talking about innings played. You're not talking about um, hits, batting average. You're talking about the relationships um, that you're making that I know will last way beyond your college years. Um, you know, so I think it's so amazing to have that like level of recognition and gratitude for the people that you get to like <laughs> be bosses with on the field. Um, it's just, <laughs> it's just so inspiring and cool. So very cool. What is your, I don't know if you've had a chance to think about that, but like, what's your dream job, no matter when you graduate, what's next year or the next year after what's your dream job? My dream job since I was a little girl has always been to do broadcasting for a major network, you know, ESPN, NFL network, a certain team. Um, that's, that's kind of always been my dream. I have such a passion for sports and I have a passion for broadcasting and writing because I love telling the stories sports brings mm. and telling the stories of people like that is to me, hands down what makes sports special the games are great. Like, you know, the intense moment, last minute shot or seventh inning pitch, like that's all great. But like the stories of the people who play is what I love and what I want to share and just bring life to. And, and, you know, I was really fortunate. I just was asked to attend uh, the big 10 networks first ever women's leadership summit where I congratulations I got, That's amazing. thank you yeah thank you and and I got to listen and be in the same room and celebrate you know the 50th anniversary of title nine with Lisa Byington who's the voice of the Milwaukee Bucks with Sage Steely who's you know sports center every single morning so people or women excuse me who have broken so many barriers and who have you know become the first in what they're doing so now you know, hopefully myself and so many others, we, we can be the next. And, and those are just some of the shoes that I hope to follow someday. I have no doubt you will. I mean, you're, you're already, again, you're, <laughs> you realize whether by accident or not, like the power of the mind to be able to say, this is what I want to do. <clears throat> this is where I want to grow my, my passions. This is the, where I want to express myself and to follow that. That's rare. I think that's rare. So I think it's amazing that I can sit here with you and be a part of your journey in this very small way to hear, you know, all the things that you've done and where you want to go. Like, I know I'll be seeing you out there broadcasting and writing and doing all the things you love and continuing to play, continuing to play. It's been, you know, my pleasure to know you the months up to this moment and during this conversation and just really, really appreciate just, just the human being that you are. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure of mine as well. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. And just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And I know, you know, this discussion is going to touch a lot of people and, you know, that that's why I'm here and that's why I invited you to share the space with me. And so I, I am not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and I just I have so much appreciation for what you're doing too for so many athletes I mean people like you are truly the difference maker with in sports and you know just prioritizing the athletes as people before athletes and that's just so powerful and you know it's it's becoming more common but it's still so rare and it's so special and it truly changes lives of athletes Thank you, Sydney. That means a lot. I really, really appreciate that. I mean, it just, it just, that puts some more fuel in my tank to just keep going. Cause I know, I know it's helping and I really, really appreciate it. I look forward to staying in touch. Yes, absolutely. Me too.
One of my favorite things about our Sports Epreneur content platform is the opportunity to chat with amazing people in and around the world of sports. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you want to connect more, hit us up on Instagram at Sports Epreneur. Thank you for listening to this Cad Source production, the Sports Epreneur podcast, the podcast where sports and entrepreneurship collide. Sports Epreneur is a content platform, a collaborative team, and a marketing brand that is all about showcasing leaders and difference makers in and around the world of sports. While we create our own content, we also create content with you. This includes collaborative content and exclusive content for your brand. Think podcasts, blogs, social media, and overall content strategy. Our sports content marketing team is specifically niche for those in the sports industry. That includes sports businesses, athletes, managers, coaches, trainers, entrepreneurs, and business leaders in the sports market. The bottom line is we want to help with your sports-related brand, your content marketing, and your story. Connect with us on Instagram at sportsepreneur or find us online at sportsepreneur.com. Sports Epreneur, the content platform where sports and entrepreneurship collide.